Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Did you know that nitrocellulose lacquer never cures? So here's the thing about lacquer, nitrocellulose lacquer, acrylic lacquer. Like I said, it never cures, ever. Catalyzed lacquers are a bit of a different story, but your general nitrocellulose, acrylic, that kind of stuff, your standard lacquers that you find, there seems to be a misconception here that I think needs to be cleared up. They, they don't cure, they just dry. So as you can probably tell, I've used a few lacquers. There are, there are a bunch of different types, there are a bunch of different brands. Nitrocellulose being probably the most common for say guitars and a lot of furniture, although there's been a shift lately to acrylics uh, and those are more common in cans now. But the thing that seems to confuse people is they think that you, know, you, you spray something and then you wait for it to cure. But lacquer doesn't do that. It only dries. So at this point, you, you may very well be thinking, well, what the hell's the difference? Or worse, you may be thinking, oh crap, I can't use lacquer if it never, doesn't cure. It'll never get hard enough. Let's clear that up too. So first of all, a finish that cures changes chemically. That's why catalyzed finishes generally cure. The catalyst causes a reaction. It turns into something different when it cures. So you can't go back in and remelt it, re-reduce it using the same reducer. It's a different chemical compound when it's done curing. Conversely, if you have some dried nitrocellulose lacquer, you can take lacquer thinner, remelt it, and make more nitrocellulose lacquer. There are some, some benefits and some drawbacks to having a drying finish as opposed to a curing finish. So as you might have guessed, the curing finish is a little bit more durable, but that doesn't mean that a drying finish doesn't harden. It does, it just takes a while. It's a little bit slower and maybe not as durable when all said and done, but you're still gonna be able to reach a full hardness with acrylic lacquer or nitrocellulose lacquer uh, until you heat them up again or get them you know, chemically soft, in, in which case you can turn them back into liquid. The main benefit, at least as far as I'm concerned, to something like a nitrocellulose lacquer is because it doesn't cure, it's super easy to repair. You can take, for example, a dried flake of nitrocellulose lacquer that you sprayed onto a piece of plastic, pop it off of there, get some lacquer thinner, place the flake on top of a chip in a finish, spray some lacquer thinner over top and melt it right back in. Because the solvent in it causes it to re-wet, it will melt into itself. You don't have to sand between coats. Yeah, there, there are definitely some benefits to using a nitro as opposed to say a catalyzed polyurethane, but it doesn't cure. Some people have had issues with acrylic lacquers not drying properly. Uh, nitrocellulose lacquers generally don't have that problem because they've got such a heavy solvent in them that it evaporates, they flash off, they're dry to the touch within a minute or two, and then over the course of about a month, they reach full hardness. As with anything, not all nitros are the same. They're usually fairly similar. My favorite, as you can probably tell by the look of my bench, is the Bellin stuff. Out of all the ones I've used, I find that it performs the best. Particularly the spray cans are excellent. They spray extremely well. Uh, you can make pretty much any decent lacquer spray well through a gun if you know what you're doing but I find that their lacquer gives a great finish, the stuff that I put through my gun, and it hardens really well. The Watco cans are pretty good as well, and the benefit to them, I don't, it depends on where you live, you can probably get the Bellin stuff, um, but if you can't, Watco is a division of Rust-Oleum, which is what this is. This can's not very good, don't buy these. But the Watco stuff works pretty well and tends to be available at like Home Depot and most of your hardware stores. One of the nice things about the Bellin, if you're planning on mixing it and spraying it through a gun, is you can get a flattener for it, so you can make a matte lacquer. You can get this crackle lacquer, which is got a hilarious name, crackle lacquer. Anyway, uh, for a crackle finish, yeah, they've got the Qualilac lacquer, which behaves a little bit differently. It, it, it's all great stuff. I'm gonna toss some links in the description for the Bellin stuff. Like I said, it's my favorite and the one that I would recommend. It also helps that they sent me a bunch of it for free a couple of years ago. You guys probably noticed if you've been following my channel that long and I loved it immediately, and it's basically what I've been using ever since. Uh, they will be affiliate links, so if you do decide that you want some, that helps me out if you buy it through there. If you don't like me, don't buy it through there, just go search it separately, and then I don't get anything, uh, which is fine. Do what you want. And that about covers it, so drop your questions in the comment section below if you have any. If this helps you out, give it a thumbs up, I would appreciate that, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so we can do more videos using all of this stuff. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Have a good one.